to the morning as long as we make the show we can be the best well hello 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 ladies and gentlemen we are here we are actually here in the newly developed background oh we got the background here oh we got the oh hold on let's do some adjustments let's get let's Definitely don't want to disrespect Jason Johnson. Got to get Jason into the fray. The lighting is nice in here. Jeez, I I really can't uh, believe it. Honestly, we got some memorabilia over here. Um, that's a uh, collectible um, Devil's Bowl Speedway car I've had for years. Um, dang, I don't even know. Do I start explaining what's all the way around here? I mean, do I really talk about that uh, symbol on there? I, I I don't know if I should. Um, obviously the sign, my sense of humor, uh, may hurt your feelings. It's proven true over the years. Uh, that's my, uh, trophy from kicking everyone's ass at Penn's Creek in Pennsylvania. Uh, that's an old motorcycle helmet. Uh, that's one of the baddest ass Sammy Swindell things I've ever seen in my life. Um, that's one of those T's, you know, when you go to the Chili Bowl, no, that thing next to the Swindell picture, that golden driller. You can buy a tea at the Chili Bowl, and it's kind of like a yellow. Well, I took a can of gold spray paint and sprayed all over it. I also took, some of you may remember this, I also took a Iron Man mask, like the character Iron Man, and I painted it with the same spray paint as that, and it was gold. And I wore that, and y'all might remember, I think it was like 2014 or something, the, uh, the golden driller looking guy. It was an Iron Man mask, but it was painted gold. And it was the same thing as that that actually has Sammy and uh, Kevin's signatures on it. So got that sign, the little golden driller. Um, that's the old license plate from the Texas, uh, the vehicle, Texas, obviously. Uh, kind of got it re-registered in another state now. Uh, but that's the license plate went, you know, 260, 70,000 miles in a matter of three or four years. Um and that thing right there, Chaz Thompson Designs, back to Chili Bowl. You may have seen Chaz Thompson Designs on the Brian Clausen uh, or Clausen Motorsports cars. Um, very interesting. Also, that hat, I just put it up there because that was actually the same hat I wore. It's all sweaty and dirty because we were busting ass up and down the road, which we still may be doing here very soon. Um, hero cards I designed for a couple drivers. That's uh, for Lincoln Drewis up there, the Ekman Dental Arts cars. Uh, and just a bunch of stuff. In the background, but this piece is very interesting. I thought this was an innovative piece for non-wing uh, sprint cars, and I actually saw a car utilize this same style of piece at the Turkey uh, Night event at Ventura on Saturday, and it was a yellow car, and I, I think I have a picture of it. Let's see. Um, yeah, right here. This is the car right here that it, this piece actually went on. I, I used to do designing in wraps as well. Uh, once again, wraps, websites, hero cards, any kind of graphical uh, needs you may need. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a phone call away, but um, or a message, Facebook message away. But this is the actual car that that piece uh, went on, and it it went on that sector of the car uh, where the kickout rails are, basically. And it kind of made it. It was designed for the non-wing car to have those sides on there but even for the wing car it looked pretty badass actually i think it would be uh somewhat of a badass look for everyone to start doing that it kind of added some protection to the things behind it over there added some protection of dirt flying up into the driver as well if somebody was to the inside and the right rear was kind of in that area kicking the dirt up from from underneath the car uh kind of was going away this wing actually was designed to fit this wrap that i i did up on this uh, raven colt multi-time champion at the time in texas um, and, and the wing kind of went with the flow. It was actually really nice kind of circular design, but it went on the kick rail guards of the, uh, side there, the side rails of the, the sprint car and it made it look really cool. And you had both sides on it, almost gave it that kind of Indy car feel, you know, how the, the, the body kind of bows out on the Indy cars and the formula one cars, putting that little piece on that opening right there, kind of made it look like an Indy car, kind of made it look like an Indy car. Uh, but it looked really cool. It was a piece that I was like, oh, I still have this. When I went down to Texas a couple months ago to get some uh, remaining items uh, from down there. And uh, it was really cool. So that's where that piece actually goes. 
uh, onto the the car, and that's where that that piece was located. And it was really, I, I thought, like I said, I thought it was badass. And I saw a guy. The reason I put it over here is I saw a guy Ventura utilize the same thing. It was just solid yellow. I think he had a logo on it, but I think it is a place where you could put onto a wing sprint car or a non wing sprint car, especially when you utilize those battle bars. The non wing guys do it fits really well because some people do the single bars on the wing cars. I get that. But if you do have battle bars, it fits perfectly over that. Another spot, you could put an advertiser. And I'll tell you what, it sticks out because most people out there, they just don't have them. So when you actually do have it on your car, it sticks out from all the other cars at the track. Because people are like, oh, what is that? I've never seen that before. And that's kind of why I did it. Um, And also, the funny thing about that car is I also kind of started putting the names in or the last name into the number. I know that that was kind of a late model innovation, but I haven't seen... Or hadn't seen sprint car drivers try to do that. And I thought that was pretty cool. A couple of people have been doing it since. Mainly, uh, uh, like I said, a late model uh, modified thing down there in uh, or down across the country. So I thought that, I thought that was a pretty cool uh, piece that to just slap back out over here. Um, I don't know. What else is around here? A bunch of Swindell merchandise, all this stuff. It, it, it's a really nice background. I'm impressed. I'm liking it. It's, it, it's, it's really, really really fancy i'm just gonna say it's just fancy i'm sorry i don't have the hair out i'm sorry i don't have the shades we are working on that i will tell you what though we do have the professional gas lighter long sleeve on and i'll tell you what i told y'all i was getting the shirts and uh, the masks and all that to um you know walk in very cold temperatures and today i believe it was 17 degrees 16 degrees outside and I went for a walk. I walked probably about hmm mile and a half. Well, maybe probably more than that. Around around two mile mile and a half to two miles. I didn't really I didn't wear a watch or anything to uh you know know how far I'm walking. I'm not trying to win a sprint car race here, so I'm not gonna win, wear a watch and and let it tell me where I'm at. But I, I wore the long sleeve. I also wore the the mask. These mask protectors that you know put under over the arm. Very comfortable. And very warm. That was really a big deal out here in this Iowa wind. Um, this cuts it out. And it, it pretty much just, you know, takes away that piercing feeling of 17 degree, uh, you know, temperatures with that 20 mile an hour just cuts right through you. With that, it, it goes away. And it was it was actually somewhat fairly comfortable walking around as long as I did today um, wearing that mask. And we actually have another one in here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to give this one away. Maybe we'll do something at Gateway because I do still plan on going to Gateway at least for the Saturday night event, uh, the final night over there. Um, I think it'll be cool. It, um, obviously, Gateway, just going there and visiting and seeing that place. If you have not ever went to Gateway, yes, the racing is not all that, but the atmosphere, the show is, you know, you go to like a PBR, like professional bull riding or any of these other arena style shows, monster trucks, they kind of suck. I mean, let's just say it. I mean, the professional bull riding was possibly the worst actual action I've ever seen in my life, but the show was good. The clown being a dumbass, the hype up, the girls dancing, this, that, and the other, the 6'3 woman that was going to college. We got her own video. That was so funny, but I'm just saying, uh, the show sucked. So if I was to compare Gateway Dirt Nationals to like monster trucks and Supercross and especially to PBR, blows them all out of the water. So in, in that aspect, it is a, a badass show and, and a must-see, must-go-to event. Now, we did actually get a package in the mail, and I was saving to open this outside of getting this. Mm, let me get that nice little. Mm, that's good. The professional gas lighter. Coffee cups on the website as well. New arrivals. If you can't get... I heard some people say they couldn't find the professional gas lighter stuff on Long Live the Chaz. Um, here is the... Uh, obviously, this is Facebook. But if you type in uh, longlivethechaz.com, and then you load up that page, you'll see how we have it laid out here. They got the tabs on the top. If you go and just scroll over the shop, it should drop it down. And new arrivals is where... Uh, the professional gas lighter uh, merch is is located, or the coffee cups located. Uh, I also believe I threw in there some uh, the uh, regular Chaz merchandise, throwback kind of long live the Chaz stuff. But that is where uh, the professional gas lighter merch is located. Also through, like I said, a long uh, a the Chaz hoodie 
as well as a Long Live the Chaz hoodie. There's a bunch of colors in this. There's like 40 different color selections uh, in this uh, whole shop here. But if you can't figure it out by going to the actual website, um, the link in the description below here in the channel after the uh, type up of what the show's about and all that, right below the first link, New Arrivals link, will take you directly to that page. And that's how you can get this back. I like this, co I like this coffee cup because that blue kind of just accents the little bit of blue. Uh, within the cup. I may adjust this design. This is another reason I like to buy my own stuff and see what it looks like. I may adjust this design because I don't like how that goes to the tip of the cup. I like stuff a little bit more center, even if it has to be a little smaller. It still does look nice as it is. Um, but, you know, I'm a perfectionist. I hate, I, I do all my own stuff, and the reason I like to do my own stuff is because if something's wrong, I can fix it. Uh, regardless, we got this... Uh, Package in the mail, and we're going to open it. Apparently, it is from Patrick Crobb, which Patrick Crobb is a uh, racer from uh, Hawaii, but he has lo relocated to uh, Tucson, Arizona, and we're seeing what we got in here. Looks like we got some cards and stuff. Patrick Crobb, he's got his wing car right there, a little card deal. What is this? Just a little card. Looks like maybe some uh, promo material, Patrick Crobb. Like I said, hey, Patrick Crobb, we can hook you up with some uh, promo material too. Hey, let me show you how this badass this thing looks. This is just a, a nice little, I took from the footage that I got. Car sitting there in staging. Driver going down the back straightaway took his, uh, man, that, that, that photo right there is just so badass. To know that that came off of a video that I was shooting and then I just kind of took it as a still is un unbelievable. And then the other side, obviously... Uh, just uh, Furby's Garage, all the all the supporters up there uh, with that team. Actually, I think I want to, I think I'm going to flip that over this way. For, oh, oh, crash and burn. That's horrible. That's horrible. Come on, stay. All right, good dog. All right, now let's see here. We got Pratchett Crobb, and I don't, I don't, you ladies need to turn away right now because you may, uh, your husband may get mad at you if you keep watching, but this is this is Patrick Crobb right here from Pearl City, Hawaii, and they call him the Aloha Kid. That's him in his non-wing car. I kind of like that old school kind of checkered look. Um, number three K non-wing and and wing car. He also has the wing car here with the same uh, fancy picture at the bottom. Uh, ASC Southwest Regional Racer as well. So. Uh, and he signed it. How about that? That's almost better than some of these freaking cards I got over here. Signed it. Oh, my. Both of them are signed. You couldn't see it because of the marker, but that one is signed right there. But, uh, yeah, we may have to place these up here somewhere. I mean, we got we got room, don't we? Or maybe we could, you know, hell with Lincoln Drewis. Who the hell is that guy anyways? No, I'm just playing. But, hey, we could throw them up over here. Will it stay? Oh, it will stay. Looky there. And I even like how that car looks. The wing car, eh, we got wing cars everywhere behind me. We ain't got a nice looking non-wing car, and I do like how that checkered looks. That checkered looks badass. But anyway, uh, let's see. Is there anyone in the YouTube chat yet? We just started. It is like uh, 5.30. We usually never go live at this point of the day, uh, but why not? Uh, the digs on Larson with the watch is so funny for real. Okay, call in for from Burke, Joe, or Spike. Nope, they're not coming. Uh, no Donnie Shots memorabilia. No, we do not have any Donnie Shots memorabilia. Um, and Dean Henry's in here. How is it going? And then, oh no, it's the Chaz. All right, well, let's get into some topics because there is some topics that are worth discussing outside of you and your people. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You and your people. Oh yeah. Obviously today, for those who have paid attention, the World of Outlaws have posted... On their Facebook page that Sheldon Hodenschild has decided to bite the bullet. He There is some blood sacrifice stuff going on. And for some reason, he is going to the World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series. Big loss. big I, I think a huge loss uh, for the potentiality of high limit racing taking a star. Um, Sheldon is a draw. I mean, Sheldon is a draw. Uh, in this sprint car world, people, I mean, does he succeed how we would like him to? Um, has he lived up to the hype that everyone wants, you know, him to? 
Last year, I mean, there was a slump there where he was doing extremely subpar for a long time. I mean, heck, I got drunk one night at, at Eldora. Uh, I think it was first or second. I th well, actually, I think it was the last night of the whole week, Kings Royal. And, and there was a group, and I think it was Ripper. And I, I, I literally posted, I said, what the hell's going on? What, what, what the fuck's going on with this 17 car? And he was saying that it was somewhat of a motor situation. So some people think that some of these teams are just uh, un, uh, limit, uh, li unlimitedly funded. And it sounds like that wasn't the case. You know, they have a few good motors, but they, those few good motors, if they want them to perform or if they want the team to perform well on bigger stages, that they have to kind of save those motors for those bigger stage based events. Uh, and that that was kind of the reason the 17 car hadn't been running so consistently. Not sure if everybody wants me to let the world know that y'all may be a little underfunded on the situation, but at least in the motor department, maybe it's supply and demand, maybe parts for low. I don't know. But this is what I was being told. Um, and maybe that can change now. I don't know. Maybe going forward, there's going to be some more motors, better equipment. I don't know what, what what's holding Sheldon back necessarily. But regardless... He is coming back next year. Obviously, yesterday or the day before, one of the two, Gio Selzy, said he was going to be going to the World Outlaw Sprint Car Series. So you got a lot of commitments uh, already. It almost looks like the gang's back together, minus Brad Sweet. Obviously, we haven't heard anything uh, from Shots, which which most people would assume that he's somewhat of a traditionalist uh, in the sense of sprint car racing and that he's going to commit to the World of Outlaws. Most would assume uh, that Carson Macedo and that team's going to commit to the World of Outlaws, you you never know though. I mean, there's a lot of Tarleton ties to that car, um, and the 41 team. Uh, obviously, Macedo, right in there with with the bunch, um, and you know Tarleton did sponsor a race for Kyle Larson in the NASCAR Cup Series. We can't forget that there was a literal Tarleton Cup car at Vegas a couple years ago. So there could be. I don't. I mean, I would say. Macedo's going to the Outlaws. Most people would say he's going to the Outlaws. Maybe it's already been said and I look like an idiot. But there is that outside, you know, uh, with these cars, you know, they get around and go up and down the roads based on the funding of the sponsors and the supporters. This is why the gravel announcement wasn't really any kind of shock to anyone when you got like six of the biggest races or whatever of the Outlaws next year. When that car commits to the Outlaws, it makes no it, that the guy or the the organizations on that car that make it go up and down the road are, are tied to that side. So, back to the 41 car, I know that all buy or whatever your alternative, because uh, it was so interesting in the beginning, beginning of the year, I heard all buy, I heard all ball, I heard that that support wants to win a World of Outlaw Series championship, but also you got this Tarleton side, Tarleton, Macedo, Larson, Tarleton and Larson obviously have an established relationship, like I said, we've seen on the biggest stage of motorsports in America, uh, Got to give NASCAR that respect. They have built it. That's where they are. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Uh, but the the funny thing that I've I've kind of seen here is that we haven't really seen um anyone outside of Brad Sweet commit to the High Limit Series. Now we have speculation with the Brett Marxes of the world. I got personal speculations with the Brian Browns of the world. Chase Randall's are out there, you know, some other people, but Chase Randall apparently is committed to Knoxville. I'm just saying, there's a bunch of different names out there. Brett Marks is one of them. This guy, Tyler Courtney, Zeb Wise. And we got all these guys who we think are going to make the announcement. But at this point, obviously High Limit has has not fired back with a, a, a driver or anyone coming out publicly to commit. And I don't, I'm not going to sit here and think, that they don't have a few already committed. And I've been putting the uh, it's so quiet out there um, picture in my videos the last two. And I, I used the Raptor from Jurassic Park to kind of emulate what that means. And, and and what I mean by that is like the decoy. You know, it's like outlaws are over here hunting one by one. We got them. We got them. We got them. But Raptors work in packs. When you think you got them, all of a sudden, something steps out right here, and they got you. So, what I mean by that is we potentially, I think we potentially have a situation here where you're not going to see single drivers make an announcement that they're 
going to the high limit series. That that's somewhat, um, you know, in a way, stooping to the low of the outlaws by res- by doing the same thing. It's copycatting in a way, and, and it's just following their lead. Where I think high limit, they're trying to do something different and lead in a different way. I, I'm pretty sure it was last year. You know, we didn't see too many high limit or this year when it when high limit started up. We didn't really see too many high limit. We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going posts. We saw a big giant post of the high limit high roller roster, and it was like 20 cars or whatever. We saw it at the beginning of the year. And that's how they sort of publicly released who was committed to the high limit series, the midweek series of this year in 23. Now going into 24, I mean, like I said, I think there's some drivers already signed up and committed to go high limit racing. I do think that on the behind the scenes aspect, these drivers are being told, don't tell nobody. We're going to do this a little different. Uh, I don't care if it's Jeremy Elliott, the Chaz, whoever's asking you, you don't, don't give no, no nothing away. And we're going to roll this out in a pack situation. And, And maybe, and maybe it won't be like a pack of like 20, like we saw this year. Maybe it'll be six here. Or six there. The first set of high rollers. You know, almost like a, a box of football cards. You pull a box of football cards out or anything high level. You know, it's four cards here, four cards here. You know, and it's released in a set. So potentially here, I think that high limit's going to be going the pack route. And not just the outlaw one by one route. Uh, and release sets of drivers coming out and racing. Um, obviously, we all think that Kyle Larson's going to commit to the midweek series of the event. Um, not so sure when it comes to the entire year, but I would I would rest assured that you'll see Kyle Larson at almost uh, you know close to no World Outlaw races outside of the marquee events that are outlaw sanctioned, and if he has an opening in the schedule, it's going to be to profit his you know series conglomerate there with the High Limit series, and you'll potentially see him at a bunch of different areas. Um. I was going to talk about a few things with this high limit situation to begin with. Somebody asked me, you know, the other day, they said, Chaz, you know, have you talked about this all-star high limit merger? And I'm like, yeah, I have, you know, I've talked about it as far as what it can do, how I could do this and this, that, and the other. And he asked me, he's like, so have you, you know, well, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me check the chat. Has anybody sent a chat? Hold on. I, I, I've been told to kind of keep up with the chat a little bit here. Um, any, first of all, any comments on this pa- uh, pack release? Because I have, I already have sort of an idea of what I want to say. I don't have it written down or anything, but I have a topic that I like to just freestyle on. Uh, the Chaz got ran through by the Clark and is talking fantasy now. This I don't know what's going on. So you got the Jordan and Spike Fast Racing Tando in here. And for those who have watched David Gravel and all these high-profile people on YouTube like me and... and, and uh, Dirt Tracker, all these people, especially in the lives, you see this Spike and Jordan guy literally just trolling the, the comment sections. So these guys are bad, bad news. They they only send super chats to David Gravel. They don't send anything to the Chaz. It's just unbelievable. Uh, Alan Beggood, and they might be, you know, developing a a formulation, right? It's like the Generation X here. You got Broke Joe is his mentor. Um you know, so we got us a group developing. Looks like Bedgood may be joining. This isn't a one-year plan. Laugh out loud. Give it time. Brad and Carter should be worried. They should be worried. All stars with a deck of cards logo. You mean? Oh god, this, just just talking crap. And here's Larson Land. Hi, Chaz. So Larson Land's joined the fray. I'm sure if you go to Larson Land videos, you'll see these freaking trolls and Spike and all these people uh, just rolling out here and there. Stephen McKenzie said, "What happened to you putting out a song?" Hey, I mean. It is what it is. The song stuff takes a little bit longer than you thought. Um, and what I thought. My opinion, you don't have to understand it. I don't know what that means. Do, 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 do. Anyways, just giving an opinion. Chaz, you are a okay dude. Well, hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, me, personally, I think that Spencer Baston will flip. Hmm. Landon Form, uh, Ford coming in hot. Coming in hot. We actually do have a song completed. We just have to put the uh, music video over it. It's called Rip the Lip. It is going to be happening um, uh, very soon. Probably going to be out before the end of the week. But regardless, uh, Spencer based in flipping all this stuff, it's going to be interesting. I think they're going to come out in packs. I think they're going to come out in packs. I think if they could flip Macedo, that would be a big one. 
because I think in everyone's mind right now, all you have to worry about is Gravel and Macedo and maybe Geo sells you for your championship next year in the Outlaws. If you don't, um, if you don't get one of those guys, I mean, yeah, Rico, yeah, Tyler Courtney, we're going to see how it goes. We're going to be able to see these groups battle throughout the year. Uh, but I think they're not going to roll it out the same way. I think they are going to roll it out in uh, groups. I'm Team Chaz. These other people are weird. Outlaws versus High Limit is real. Uh, I agree so. And uh, Dirt Vision versus Flow is also a very, very real thing. Also, um, I do think that if if world if uh if if High Limit really wants to take the cake and cut the nuts off the World of Outlaws, Flow Racing, you go and give a seven digit damn offering to Johnny Gibson to come announce the High Limit Sprint Car Series, and you instantly basically tank the World of Outlaws. The World of Outlaws and their brand is that that you wanted the best, you got them four breasts, and it's it's the name, it's the style, it's the it's the presentation that um you know Johnny Gibson can do. I, I know that Johnny Gibson is a very hard hardcore World of Outlaw guy, and it sounds like the biggest betrayal in the history of mankind if he was to to do that. And I don't I don't think there's any indications that he would do that. But I'm just saying, businessman to businessman. Flow Racing, if you really want to take down the world of outlaws and high limit, you want to go next level, I know you're looking for an announcer, throw the damn lottery at Gibson. Throw throw ownership, whatever you want. If you could take Johnny Gibson from the world of outlaws, buddy, I don't know what multi-year contract he may have or what that is. I'm, I'm just saying. That's a big piece. That's a big piece because the announcer situation is still up in the air uh, at high limit. Regardless, it seems like y'all just can't get uh, uh, enough of yourself, especially with Spike in the channel. But but I did want to talk. Somebody asked me about, you know, have I talked about all stars and high limit as a merger and what I actually think of the merger? Not as far as like how I could take over the outlaws, but what I think about it. And I don't think I've actually said what I think about the high limit all star merger. Um honestly, I mean there's there's multiple ways to look at it. You can look at it as like it's a real good boost for high limit. You can look at it as all stars have been on the brink of going national. Maybe Tony Stewart should have did it. And this is the perfect combination to finally get the all stars to that national scene that they proclaim where they were the first to ever be, you know. Um but at the same time, it is somewhat of like, uh, you know, Super Mario Brothers for the high limit. They eat the mushroom and just grow up instantly. Um, you know, it's a very big shortcut for high limit and that whole organization to be able to jump that fast. Um, it's also very, I don't want to say sad um, for the Ohio Sprint Car region. But when you think about the All-Stars, it's mainly just PA and Ohio. Yeah, they did a few swings here and there. Mainly Ohio, mainly Pennsylvania. Um, obviously, you got local racing in those regions, but it is going to suck for the Ohio sprint car scene because the All-Stars sort of kept that thing going. Uh, it would be like King of the West all of a sudden, not going to be a California series, and they're a national series now. And you start running out in the Midwest more and, and, and all that. You know, it's it's not the same, obviously. I mean, geographically, it's not possible to make that comparison. But in a weird way, it is. We're talking about platforms here. Not necessarily uh, geographically, but platforms of status within the sprint car world. So it does kind of suck for the Ohio racing scene. Obviously, we've been hearing there's something in the backgrounds working with, I've been told, World Racing Group of doing some kind of Ohio sprint car situation a series of some sort to that region now because of this change um but there also is dilemmas in this change you know um all stars were the first you know now we have to say were the first because previously we, we could say is the first national sprint car series but now they were they're they're no longer around it, it's it's over like the all-star brand is dead now so a brand that had been around since 1970 or whatever is gone. Um, so back to traditionalism, if you like that part of sprint car racing and of the sport, that sucks, you know. Um, even though it is for Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet and this 
big idea. Um, some people are saying this big idea is based in selfishness. Um, but it, it was a sacrifice. The all-star circuit of champions was a sacrifice in a way for this high limit sprint car or high limit racing situation. And then you got to think of who the drivers will be. I mean, there was only, you know, when we talked about the outlaw tour in previous years, the reason you had a Noah gas out there and this guy or that guy who really wasn't keeping up was basically the, the people on the world of outlaw sprint car series tour who signed up were kind of the only sprint car teams that could afford to travel nationally. You know, most of the time, the reason a team was an all-star team instead of an outlaw team is because they couldn't afford to travel to that degree that the outlaws do. Big difference between, and this is where sprint car racing is going to run into an issue trying to emulate the late model world. It's a big difference. You know, in the late model racing industry, there's probably 100, 120 teams that are funded well enough to stay on the road full-time in a national racing sense. You're not even close to that sprint car world. Who? We maybe got 20 teams that can afford to run nationally. Maybe 20. Like full-time, just full bore go. Maybe. Now, a benefit the late models do have is even though they do venture into Wisconsin more and Minnesotas and down through the Southeast more and Floridas and Tennessees and Missouris a lot more, Arkansas and all through the, all this stuff, you know, Kentucky and West Virginia's and Maryland's and the late models don't do a West coast swing, you know, technically they are kind of more centricated. So it does make it a little bit easier to, have that amount of teams that can compete nationally because I hear that the big hurdle to be jumped right here for a lot of these all-star normal teams to commit high limit full-time is this big West Coast swing. And that's making it a big issue and decision for some guys to say, yeah, I can do that. Because obviously a few of these all-star teams are okay with a Midwest swing every now and then. We all know that the money, the fan base money, is located in Pennsylvania and Ohio. That's where you get your money shows at. You could say Iowa, even though there's 200 freaking tracks in Iowa, there's only one that seems to get a good crowd, and that's Knoxville. I mean, Oskaloosa, if it's not that, you know, front row challenge, it don't get a big crowd. 34 Raceway, the high limit racing event last year that Anthony McElroy won, had Kyle Larson, had all this stuff, perfect date, didn't have the best weather, but it was okay. It, it, It was maybe half full. So, I mean, this is an issue that you're going to run into is how many teams can even compete nationally and stay going and running. The late, and I get it. Late models do it. We can too. Late models have a hundred ish teams that can financially do that. And they buy haulers and rigs that they sleep and stay in. That way they don't go spend an extra who knows how much to have a hotel every night of the week. I don't even want to guess how much that actually costs. So they actually have, you know, full-blown motor homes, you know, as a traveling rig. I think a few teams in the sprint car world have that. I believe the Ryan Timms team, they have a a setup similar to a late model team. But obviously, Randy Timms, Ryan Timms' dad, is a big-time modified guy, big-time modified racer, uh, or was previously. uh, Hell, I I think he still jumps in every now and then and wins a race. But... We, I, I don't think the sprint car world has really thought this through as you maybe have 20-ish teams that can afford financially to just tour full-time. So I think that's going to be the bigger issue with this situation. Um, obviously, like I said, All-Stars were a PA Ohio situation. You know, travel 10 to 15 hours in any direction if you were in the Indiana, Ohio Valley area, if you were going to be a full-time All-Star team, you know, out here to the Midwest, to PA, and then back and all in the center in the middle. And, and like I said, a few swings, a few swings down to I-70. Is that a big travel if you're based in Indiana? You know, or, or, or you know, what what's the biggest travel that you think an all-star team? I mean, Florida to open the season, but Florida isn't even a points race, I do believe. So this is a situation 
we may be just figuring out that we don't have the finances in the sprint core world logistically to have the amount of teams to have two national series. We're not the late model industry. We don't have a hundred teams funded, not corporatized, funded like people and businesses that make good money over there funding those racing organizations. The, the small business owners of the, of the world are funding 75%, 80% of those teams over there. You know, because there's a lot more fans. It's organically based. They get more money paid even in regional weekly census. The late model economical system is just so much more advanced than us. We're dependent on corporatism. That's the biggest issue. The sprint car world is dependent on corporatism. You know, there's not a lot of people out there shooting the own gun that they're riding. Who's an owner operator out there that's so extremely successful? It's just not out there. There's a lot of owner operators in some sense in the late model world. For instance, a driver connected with the main sponsor and it's a family business or something like there's a lot of those situations in the late model world. I don't see a lot of those situations in the sprint car world. So this is just something when it comes down to, you know, what I think of the merger. I'm not so sure, and I, and I, obviously optimism like me, you know, and that's why I think that this bidding for drivers are it's such a big deal. Like a Macedo and even a Sheldon, these are these are prominent people to maybe attract and, and get because you you can get hyped about that, but on the other side of it, the other side of the coin is there may just there's there's not enough guys. So if you don't take that outlaw roster that we had this year and chop it in half, or 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 lose three or four guys to high limit, how many guys are you going to have? You, you have to have that happen for there to be two national series because you're going to need three or four of those guys out of the outlaw roster to even be able to make a decent roster that people are going to pay to want to see. Obviously, Brad Sweet, okay. Kyle Larson, 60% of the year, okay. Then who else you bringing? Rico, good, good land. Rico to gravel, equal equal competitiveness. I mean, then where? Tyler Courtney? Is he, a, is he better than Sheldon? I, I would say that, that Tyler Courtney at this moment is a more consistent driver in wing sprint cars than Sheldon. It just is, in my opinion. Now, there's some things Sheldon can do that nobody in the damn world can do, but that's because he's a lizard person, and we all know this. But for the people who don't, you have to judge it from what you can see, and... You know, Tyler Courtney's just a little bit more consistent. You know, the medulla oblongata is normal in him. But at the end of the day, it, it's a scary situation. And and that's kind of what I think about this. Uh, this whole entire thing with the uh, high limit all-star merger. I just, it is a great idea. And that's why I say high limit taking outlaws down or outlaws taking high limit down, you know. The only reason I would I would say that is because I don't think the economics of the sprint car world is built for two national series. You need one or the other to win. I just don't think there's enough cars for two to survive. Or you'll have the high limit, go out here and try the national swing one or two years. And then fall off the block and basically go back to an all-star series with a different name. You know? So one or the other has has to succeed because there's just not enough cars out there to make it work properly. And there's not enough regions. You know, it ain't like the late model, once again, to compare the late model world, which it seems like everybody spurred over all doing all this over the last three years based on seeing what the late model people have been doing. We can do that too. You see Larson saying it all the time. Um, there's not as many regions with cars as there are with late models. You can go to pretty much every damn state from Florida to, to Minnesota. If you if you went from Daytona, Florida, or hell, if you went down to Hendry County, Florida, Clora, Clewis, if you went from Palm Beach, down there where gravel lives and shit, and drove all the way to Houston, South Dakota, through Minnesota and all that, pretty much every damn state you cross has late models in it. Some form of late models. Some of them have... You could hit multiple states of 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 forty plus super late models in a regional basis every weekend. 
You can't do that with sprint cars. You got PA, Ohio, non-wing a little bit there in Indiana. And we're talking 410s now, because that's what we're talking about. Full-blown late models, not the not the 604 crates or still heads, you know, in comparison to late models. You know, we're not talking about the, we're talking about supers, talking about 410s. Iowa, little bit in South Dakota, California. And Washington, kind of, I think. They're trying. 14 cars, 12. You just don't have the same system to emulate it. Can't do it. It's not possible. Uh, It seems like some people want some call-ins. I mean, we could do some call-ins. That's kind of what I do think on the situation. Uh, Let's look at the YouTube chat. Have y'all even been saying anything relevant or have you just been talking crap? Uh, let's see here. Checking the chat. No super chats. No super. Hold on. Let's let's see. Has there been one super chat? Blank. Thanks a lot, guys. Just I'll I'll show your chats on the house. Why not? Thanks a lot. Anyway. Um, Clark puts me. I don't. Why are people talking about Clark? Kyle Larson is going to smoke everyone in this upcoming late model. Going to cook up. Go Larson. All right. There's one issue for you. Don't you see this as NASCAR, the World Racing Group, is abandoning tracks, going to new ones, hoping for more fans like Indiana. They are touching two tracks only, and they used to go to every one almost, and they and they was packed. Yeah, Indiana and the World of Outlaws not working together makes no sense to me. The, the tracks there, the racing there. I mean, that one year that the All-Stars went to Gas City, even a track like Gas City, I mean, uh, unbelievable racing. Um, there's a lot of tracks over there. A ton of tracks over there that are really badass. And I really don't understand why uh, they don't go to Indiana more. And I've heard that last year, you know, when High Limit went the Kokomo route, and we've been hearing this, how tracks are, are having to decide now. I'm telling you, these small business owners that own these racetracks and have had money and been bosses most of their lives, they don't really give a damn who you are. They don't want you calling them. They don't want you calling them and telling and telling you, well, if you do this, we ain't giving you shit. These bosses of the world don't like hearing that. These people who are grown up and entities and 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 small businesses and and their daddy or this or that was was the boss and. And they haven't learned anything but being the boss. They sure as hell ain't going to like that phone call from anybody saying, if you do this, you ain't going to get that. You know, they don't like that. They don't, I'm just saying, they don't like that. But the Indiana thing, I think you're going to see high limit in that region. I think that a high limit race the week of the Indianapolis 500 is money in the bank, uh, especially when Larson can literally race it. And there are t- a ton of, or, or, or a, a nice selection of racetracks that you could put a high limit race on near and around the Indianapolis Metroplex. So I think that's definitely happened. The Kokomo race last year, I was at it. It was very successful. Um, Tri-State, Hobstadt, possibly the more famous outlaw stop that's been on there every single year. It's an amazing race, an amazing facility. But the list of, of how many Indiana tracks there are and how many are good, it's just... There's just so many. There's just so many. I like the uh, the best race I saw out of there recently was that uh, Gas City race the All-Stars put on. I believe it was the COVID year. Not sure, but I believe it was the COVID year. Obviously, Terre Haute Action Track has been doing a lot of improvements, trying to get some kind of big-time racing back to Terre Haute, big half mile. Obviously, that's that's a stop that you could see a high limit race at. And I think that high limit's going to be really trying to go to some tracks that haven't you know, seen 410 racing in a while. Uh, but it looks like the World of Outlaws is going to have to do that as well next year because of this split and decision-making process that uh, is being forced, it seems like, onto track promoters. So it's going to be interesting to see how that, that turns out. Uh, I'm verified that feels good. Interesting. Macri and Marks will never be full-time high-limit drivers. No chance. Okay. Well, you, you are God there, Jay. You know everything. I'm sorry. I am sorry we question Jay. Alan Bedgood with the, I got you on the super chat. I got you with the, that's awesome, Alan Bedgood. From what I see, it depends on how steep 
of the banking you do that makes it hard for the sprint cars to handle on. Uh, yeah, I think I think you're about right, Lawrence. He's saying something about Lawrenceburg. Yeah, I mean, like Brist Bristol was a great example of that uh, the racing was horrible because of how banked it was, uh, and for some reason the modern um, sprint car racers were way scary or scared of. The speeds, and you heard people, oh, it's just dangerously fast. When you had Tyler Walker doing backflips, and the track was 10 degrees more banking back when they threw dirt on it, back in the early 2000s. I mean, that, you didn't really hear nobody complaining. You heard, oh, it's fast. I want to win it. Let's do it. You didn't hear nobody saying, oh, it's dangerous, and I'm worried about my wing falling apart. and I'm scared. That was pretty much the notion it felt like. You didn't get that, you know. Uh, when the track was... Technically more intense all them years ago. Um, let's see here. There's tracks built for just mods and late models and sprint cars have a hard time staying locked in the track. I mean, that's true. I'd like to see high limit at something like, you know, Marshalltown or Davenport or Boone or uh, I think it's Mason City up north, the, the US, home of the USMTS Modifieds. There's a bunch of badass tracks, and then you got Tennessee with Taswell and Volunteer Bulls Gap. Outlaws have been there. Um, there's a bunch of tracks that High Limit could really actually do some damage and put on some good races at, I think. Uh, that race was insane. I was at Gas City that night, and fans were asking why. Yeah, why are they not going back? The racing was just that damn good. But then it goes back to economics. How many people can you fit in the track? Can you pay for the event? It goes back to the money. Tell me it's all about the money. Uh, VA Cracker said, The World of Outlaws came east like five years ago, did an east coast swing, and don't know why they have not come back. Now, when you say east coast swing, what do you mean? Okay, Virginia Motor Speedway, an awesome half mile. I believe they stopped going to Virginia Motor Speedway because the dirt there is horrible. And it caused rubber situations. I remember that. I think that was the last uh, Tony Stewart victory in the sprint cars was at uh at uh, virginia motor speedway in a, at an all-star race um so th i think that it was the issue with virginia motor speedway is just the dirt there's horrible and that's something that high limit's gonna have to deal with when if they once again texas motor speedway i don't know if it's eddie gosh is still running stuff down there get on the phone get the dirt from devil's bow and bring it over there from my understanding, xr they were doing all that stuff down there at the texas motor speedway all them years ago or, or last year i think it was they backed out just because the dirt's junk. Dirt's junk. I mean, they blew like $45,000 worth of tires, I feel like. You know, I'm, I, like I said, I feel like. The 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 dirt there is just horrible. So, you all got to fix that or you all going to have a big problem at your season finale. Big, big problem. Um, is there any dirt tracks north of New York that have sprint cars? I mean, there are some over there in uh, Canada on the border of New York. Um, but it is, I've heard there's a lot of issues going to Canada there's some laws on who can enter the country, and it does have to do with drinking, I believe. And I hear that that has kind of swayed people, and there's obviously taxes, and you got to deal with Trudeau and all this stuff, and a lot of issues with, I've heard, a lot of issues with teams in the mass is, you know, multiple teams going up there and just coming right back. I don't understand why, but apparently that's an issue. I agree. There's about uh, they're about the stand on Gas City. It's trash, but racing is awesome. Midget Week was sick last year. I'm sure. Um, Will Willis says I won't pay to see a diluted series, especially when we can't get five laps in because non-talented drivers keep spinning out. Now, who are you talking about there? What race are we talking about? Talking about B mains? I don't feel like we get too many drivers. If we're even when we're talking about the All Stars, for instance. What all-star race last year had all these people just spinning out? Couldn't get five laps in. Now, I do think that that's a reason they've been reworking tracks more often lately. Obviously, more hooked up tracks favor bigger motors, better shock packages, better this, better that. The, the, the parts, house vampires, love that. Um, and obviously, if the track is glassy, icy, slick, the drivers who aren't really that good will spin out because they don't know how to actually drive. And that will cause cautions because a 900 horsepower sprint car on some of these ice rinks is hard to handle. And it doesn't really promote money. It promotes talent. And if you ain't got none, 
you will spin out and bring out cautions left and right. So, uh, I think that's a potential issue. The parts house vampires, the the uh, politics of the monetary system of the racing world is affecting uh, reworking of the tracks because it makes money. It's just you got to sell these parts that make you fast on hooked up tracks outside of the fact that it's already set up that way because you got to qualify amazingly well against the world of outlaws to even have a shot technically at winning these races. You hear about these people saying all the time, even a gravel, I think it was last week, said if you finish six or six or, or farther back, you have no shot at winning the race. So that means you have to qualify good to even have a shot because they don't invert anything for heat races. It's all about everybody showing up, collecting the check and leaving. The circus is in town. The circus is out. We all collect a check. We're gone. We're out. That's kind of how it's become. That's We've seen a lot of the late mall fans complain about sprint car racing because when they tune in, that's what they see. That they, they feel like they're watching a circus. Here's the show. Here's the clowns. Get your t-shirts. We'll see you next year. Um, So even the, the qualifying system of an outlaw show favors the parts house vampires, the engine cartels, the shock cartels, all these people who are monetizing the situation. If it if it mattered what you did in the A main and it didn't matter what you did in qualifying and heat race, you wouldn't have to spend all that money on that badass motor. You wouldn't have to spend all that money on badass shocks. Because when that track goes away, it's about that right and left foot and how you drive that race car that makes the difference. But in the current qualifying scenario, it's about how hard that car can hump when you crank it in there. That when you bend when you just bend it into the corner, got that shirt somewhere around there. Hold on. When you just bend it, actually this is on the side as well. Besides the gas liar stuff. When you when you just bend it into the corner, does that damn motor grab and keep on singing or does it does it kind of load down a little bit? Because that's the difference in qualifying. All the money. All the politics. Once again, professional gas liar stuff on the, on the website. Badass shirt. Badass shirt. Professional gas liar. Get it. Link in the description. Uh, let's see here. Let's let us sing. What what are we gonna sing? What are we gonna? We do have a new song coming out here very soon. It is called "Rip the Lip." Should we give y'all a little bit of a a preview of "Rip the Lip"? Let's do it. Let's give you a little bit of a preview of "Rip the Lip." I think we can do this. I think we can. Oh. Listen to that, buddy. It's a good one. Well, look out. I'm coming in high. Dude, this is a good one. like a punk rock vibe to it, but grunge. This guy could be an ACDC singer. So we are going to have a music video out very soon of that. I also have my own song. That was actually Zero Dark 30. Big fans of the show. They're out of the Washington, Seattle, Washington area. It's kind of that grungy kind of modern Nirvana mixed with some punk, mixed with some... I swear the singer there could do some ACDC. I swear he could. He, he would do some ACDC very well. Um, let's continue down some topics. We do have a few more. This was the best meme of the year so far. Even Taylor Swift gets it. Nicole Signor or Signor. I don't even know how to say it. Uh, she made this. Taylor Swift says, are you okay? And the response is, no, I want the 2024 high limit and outlaw schedules. I think that that is a little bit more complicated than Taylor can understand. Maybe Nicole needs some help too. But anyway, uh, this is a event that I kind of want to highlight. I tried to make it out. Things didn't go, you know, negotiations didn't go right. Uh, and, and funding this time of the year, you know, you just had Thanksgiving, we just had our West Coast, well, hell, technically, 
I left beginning of July and didn't get back to anywhere stationary until the middle of uh, September, uh, beginning of October. Um, so funding is not allowing us to attend this race, but this weekend in Las Vegas, Nevada, you do have the Open Wheel Showdown. Uh, that is this Friday and Saturday night. It is going to be on flow. It is going to be on flow. Although, I will say, and I, I'm still sitting here contemplating it, uh, going to Vegas, if you look up the flights to Vegas, it's possibly the cheapest flights in the country. Like, I drive to everywhere, but if there's an event coming up at Vegas or any reason to go to Vegas, the flights are like $140 round trip. I mean, it's it's... So much cheaper than, than driving. Although driving, very beautiful, very scenic. Some of the most beautiful country uh, in the world uh, is driving out to Vegas. And, and probably more beautiful than that is driving up to the Pacific Northwest, going up through Idaho and Washington and stuff. But you still have a nice drive on I-70 and, 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 and other areas, other directions, New Mexico, Arizona, whichever way you go, Colorado, um, Utah, to get to Vegas. It's a, it's a beautiful drive. But it is going to be on flow this weekend. Uh, it looks like they have, uh, let's see here, uh, pit passes, sells, and ends, I guess, on uh, Wednesday. And then Friday, it looks like it's pretty much just practice. And then at the end of the night, it looks like 5 o'clock is Invocation National Anthem. And they are going to be having heat races and dashes uh, in the winged sprint car. Now, look at the lineup here for classes, though. Uh, it is a 50,000 win wings sprint car race, but I believe, it, and this is all asphalt, by the way, asphalt sprint car. So yeah, it is asphalt, but it is sprint cars. That is cool. And it also is midgets and super modifieds. All three of those classes going to be practicing on Friday, but only the wing sprint cars. It looks like according to their schedule, going to be doing heat races and dash races. Uh, it does look like they're also going to be doing qualifying at 2 45 PM. So once again, asphalt racing kind of an all day into the early night scenario. And this is kind of any any big asphalt race kind of operates in this way, I, I've noticed. Um, but you'll see midgets. I believe they're racing for 10 grand. I believe the super modifieds are racing for 10 grand. If I'm wrong, I'm, I, I think I saw Blake Slee or in the in the in the comment section. He can uh, inform y'all on that. Uh, and then, well, hold on. I skipped a day. Thursday is also going to be a practice session for all classes, and that looks like it wraps up around 8 o'clock. Friday is the qualifying heat races and more practice for everyone else. And then Saturday, the big shebang. This is where the 50K is going, and uh, there is some decent names. You know, Davey Hamilton's in there, uh, Ari Lyondike Jr. So Davey Hamilton Sr. and Jr., Ari Lyondike Jr. is in there as well. And I heard the, we obviously heard on the show the other week that the RMS Racing Crew, the one that Team Ez split up with, um, Dave Estep and everyone, they are going to be bringing a midget there. So you're going to see a few dirt guys in this racing event in some sort of way, whether that's in a midget, a winged asphalt sprint car, or, or I mean, a super modified is possibly one of the baddest ass race cars on, on the planet. Uh, every one of those cars, by the way, the super modifieds are custom built. Um, there, you, you, there's no real, from my understanding, there's no real chassis manufacturers of super modifieds. So all those cars are custom. They're hundred percent custom race cars and they're one of the baddest ass race cars on the planet. Um, and there's always been an argument who's better, who's faster, super modifieds or sprint cars. And it's always been a debate, but it is cool to see these cars on the West coast. Not many of them left over there. They're trying to, you know, rekindle the asphalt racing scene and doing this big open wheel showdown event. Um, obviously, it's going to be hard for some of the East Coast or Northeast teams in the Super Modified Division to make the trip all the way out there. But we will see. A lot of work's been uh, done here with Davey Hamilton Jr. putting this event on and the, and the partners and people he's got around him. So it's going to be interesting to see how this works out. Um, for those wanting to watch on flow, for those who are interested in the big main events, uh, it looks like qualifying for midgets and the super modifieds will begin at 2.20 p.m. And I believe this is mountain time. Uh, so if it's 2.20 p.m. mountain time, that means it would be uh, 3.20 central and 4.20 east coast. No pun intended. Although if you go to Las Vegas, 4.20 100% legal. Not sure if they let their drivers. I mean, the UFC lets people fight. But anyways, um, we see here that the 
national anthem is at 3.30 p.m., so 4.30, 5.30 East Coast, 4.30 Central, I believe, because sometimes uh, Nevada can be a little weird on the time change, not sure about that, but around that time, it'll all kick off, you'll have C mains, and then you'll have A main, you'll have C mains for the wing sprint cars, A mains for the midgets, B mains for the wing sprint cars, A main for the super modified, and then 100 lap, 50,000 to win, Wing Sprint Car Main Event. And this is happening at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway Bull Ring. The Bull Ring at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. However dyslexic way you want to say it. Uh, but it should be interesting. It should be interesting. And let's see. These are pictures of these uh, asphalt and uh, super modifieds. Asphalt sprint cars and super modifieds. You see Davey Hamilton Jr.'s car right there. That's kind of the uh, sit and stance of these asphalt uh, sprint cars. And that is the super modified that Davey Hamilton Sr. is going to drive. And then Ari Leyendijk Jr. in that 25 car. There are some uh, interesting uh, contents being made. There is a little content being made, at least for this event. Uh, and you can go check it out. I believe it's on Open Wheel Showdown. Uh, just, just look that up. I'm sure if you look up Open Wheel Showdown, it'll bring up a page. We'll do it right now. Open Wheel Showdown. Let's see. There has to be a page. But I have seen most of my posts that I've seen is from Davey Hamilton Jr. So that's why I'm asking. But yeah, Open Wheel Showdown on a fa on Facebook. Uh, if you go there and look it up, there it is located. And you'll see information. And I'm sure there'll be more content popped out. Looks like a lady racer or something happening here. Looks like we got us a lady driver. There are a little bit more uh, women racers in asphalt, believe it or not. Uh, I know we see a lot of dirt, uh, as uh, open wheel, asphalt, open wheel dirt people. Uh, usually have some more women racers, late models, not too many. I think Amanda Robinson's kind of the only female racer. There are better women wrenches. Heather with uh, Dennis Herb Jr. is possibly the greatest crew chief in the country out of all dirt track racing. Um, but asphalt racing does seem to have a little more female attendance in the, in the driver's seat. Um, but anyway, open wheel showdown. Go check it out. Looks like somebody's got their custom uh, sprint car in the background, or maybe just a, I thought it was Super Modified. That's why I said custom, but they got a bunch of content popping out. There's some cars at the track getting ready, cars making some laps around it. Uh, the Bull Ring, Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Once again, if you are interested in attending this, the track is only about 20 minutes outside of the airport uh, of Las Vegas, and it's it, oh, 5K to win in the Super Modifieds. I do believe it's 10K to win in the Midgets, and then... Uh, 50k to win in the sprint cars but regardless flying to vegas is extremely cheap if you have a little money if you have a little time and you want to see something like this it's really cool i haven't got to see the damn eye yet i'm kind of pissed off about that i've been to vegas a couple times and i haven't and they just after i last went came out with that big orb thing or whatever uh which looks very cool so a lot of things you can go check out if you actually do want to see it but flowracing.com if you just want to see the racing action it is hard I think it's hard for pretty much anyone to get into any type of racing uh, that you haven't been to before in person on camera. I think it's hard to appreciate the speed and stuff of any form of racing unless you've actually went to it, you know. Um, I think dirt kind of suffers from that because sometimes the, the, the racing looks slow, like modifieds for instance not the northeast but the midwest usmts style modifieds if you go to them in person they're fucking hauling you watch them on on a, a screen they just look slow motion it sucks it's one of the biggest things that holds back the ump usmts imca modified is visual appeal on a stream they look like they're slugging around the track they're, it doesn't really look like they're flying um I don't think that that's the case with these sprint cars on asphalt. They're going to be hauling ass. I'm sure the midgets will too. The super modifieds are extremely fast as well. But I just think that some of this stuff, you have to see it in person first to have a better visualization of what you're watching. Uh, but anyways, let's check this chat one last time. That's about all we have to say here today. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, or the anti larsonite I guess. Oh, God. They're arguing in the chat. I thought this was a dirt racing channel. Well, sorry we let you down. We've done sports cards. We've went to the Chaz in Seattle. We've done music. Uh, we've done um, traveling shows. We've went here. We've went there. Sorry to let down the little-minded Spike and do something besides dirt cars. Oh, my. How could we ever? Oh, letting Spike down. How can life go on? 
I don't get it. Even more worse than Danica, nice shot. I don't know why, but this open wheel showdown means nothing because Kyle Larson will not be there. That's a very sad thing that Kyle Larson is not there. It would have added a lot of intrigue to that event, and he's probably one of the most qualified drivers to make the out-of-nowhere switch to try that out. I heard that there was some insurance issues on getting NASCAR drivers to race this event. I heard that there was some insurance issues, like it was just asphalt sprint cars in some of these people's minds are just too dangerous to allow their drivers to race it. I don't know if that pertained to Larson or not, but I heard that pertained to a few big NASCAR drivers that were potentially going to race it. There were some insurance issues that prevented it from happening. Um, super Modifieds are super lame, so is Spike. We don't even know what Super Modifieds are on the West Coast. Y'all used to have tons of them. Um, and I'm banned because the Clark cried. I, I don't understand this. Flow Racing is going to show me plugging the Clark's white. Wow. Unbelievable. Holly Giovanni, no talent, not worth watching. I, I don't I don't know what that means. Interesting chat. Mm-mm-mm. Well, at least Alan Begg good. You you at least uh uh care to show Oh, it's not on flow. Sorry, Speed Sport Live. My bad. I thought it was on flow. I'm sorry. Chaz, the last true American outlaw. Oh god. I hope not. I hope not. I hope that I'm not the last of anything. Hopefully everything keeps going. You know what I'm saying? Speed Sport Live. Okay. All right. We got it. Sorry. I'm not I'm not PR. I just you thought I would plug it. Thanks again for giving us some love today. No problem. Uh it's unfortunate. I wanted to go to that event. Tried to reach out to the right people. Didn't work out. So hey, it is an experimental event. I'm sure next year, if everything goes well this year, even on the streaming side of things, obviously people are gonna have to buy speed sport. It's kind of hard to gauge how much a uh a race on flow matters because flow has so many subscribers for so many different things it's hard to say oh you got so many flow viewers and this is how much your event was worth whereas i feel like with speed sport and a few of these other uh, broadcasting streaming services you can kind of tell like like sprint car unlimited you can tell how many people bought that event and a track can actually or an event can actually get a certain cut because it's a pay-per-view of an event style deal not a monthly subscription style I think that Speed Sport Live is a monthly subscription. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but regardless, it's not as big as Flow. So, I mean, if all of a sudden y'all got a tick in subscriptions, it's pretty much because of this event. Uh, okay, Super Modifieds, those old cars that have a wing. So disrespectful. So disrespectful, Dink Dink. Why are you a uh, a uh, channel member? Billy Dietrich call in? No, he is not. He is not. He has not responded. Somebody got to him. Somebody got to him. Once I asked some of these guys, hey, you want to come on the, on and do do some talking or anything like that? And they say yes. And, and, and all of a sudden, let me get my schedule together and I'll come on. And then I give them a three or four days and I say, all right, so what's it look like? And all of a sudden, no response. I think what happens is they, they go and tell their buddies or this guy or that guy, hey, probably going to go on the Chaz next week. And they're like, oh, you are? No, you ain't. You shouldn't do that. He'll ruin your career. Although we've created how many? How many careers have we helped on this show? Local racers getting national exposure, uh, moving drivers from West Coast to East Coast PA. I mean, how many how many different things have we done for people? Getting their names out there, getting them here and getting them there. It's just un- unbelievable. But the haters, there's a few of them because I, I talk about the politics of the sport and, and the corporatism of the sport. And the corporatism can control if your car's on the track or not. So, yeah, in Slide the Dirt, 100 freaking episodes of, of covering local regional racers, giving them exposure on my platform that I've went out here and killed myself to even do, and, and this is what we get. In Slide the Dirt kind of just fell to the wayside because it, it cost so much and did so much. Um, Billy is building two brand new cars for this year. Oh, God. You realize you're the only source that's talking about dirt racing on the nightly, bi-nightly basis. Yes. I, I, and it, is it working or is it not working? I don't know. Why do people hate on the Supers? Back in the 90s, Cooper State or Copper State Classic days, they were so fast around Phoenix that they could have qualified top 10 in the Phoenix IndyCar race. I mean, Super Modifieds are badass. I mean, it's hard to beat them. Uh, I did see somebody say Flo is the best bang for the buck. Who said that? That was Alan Bedgood with the Super Chat earlier. The only person to give a Super Chat so far. Nobody cares. Uh, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Well, at least go buy a professional gaslighter shirt on the freaking website, you know. Assholes. Um, 
Flow is 13 a month to watch a shit ton of racing and all these other sports. And they're adding stuff on all the time. It's hard to beat Flow. It is hard to beat Flow. Uh, sounds kind of gay, but whatever. Dink, dink, why are you a member? He's about to cancel his membership. I wonder if you could cancel it right now during the show and it will show Dink, dink has canceled his membership to your channel. Would that pop up? That would be kind of funny. Even though I would be losing a member, it would still be funny. It might be worth it, you know. If Flo changed the price to 10 bucks a month, they'd have triple the viewership and sponsor opportunities. Rednecks aren't made of money. But rednecks are the working class that brag about trades and how they make so much money, you know, being a plumber. So what are you talking about? Travel channel I want to watch. Maybe see the Chaz in a Speedo. Well, we may be doing some stuff here in Florida coming up. We got some plans working for the whole Florida situation right now. We got some sticks in the fire. Try to do the Australia, New Zealand thing. That's just a, a very big expense, and it's it's probably not going to happen. But Florida is always on the table. I have a bunch of people down there, a bunch of connections, uh, people who are are always wanting to see me at least once a year. So we may able to be, may, may be able to go down there and do some content here very soon. We will see. Electrician, plumbing. I mean, I'm just saying, y'all rednecks say you ain't made of money, but you sit there and you know you have your seventy five thousand dollar dually that that's a thousand or twelve hundred dollar truck payment, and you damn plumbers and you're crying you're laughing at the 15 dollar an hour mcdonald's guy and we talking about and you're crying about 10 bucks i don't know if that's the redneck class they got a class for what you're talking about but it's a little more white and a little more trashy i'm just saying that's what they might say that's what they might say that's what they might say when you say shit like that just saying uh, but anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for two minutes. Oh, God, somebody said, see you in Miami. I don't know if that can work. Why are we going to Miami? What's happening in Miami? I have, to, I have to fill me in on some more information. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing, Stephen. Well, we're going to Miami all of a sudden? Okay. We'll see. Chaz, how do you like your portable Wi-Fi you got this year? It was awesome. Um, uh, Look it up. Uh, Done right TV. Um, they are kind of doing some things a little bit different over at Dunright. I'm not sure how much longer the promotion of 50 bucks a month for the mobile internet is going to do, but it is it is nice. It is nice. Uh, I'm just a, a dumb truck driver. Oh, I know who that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dank Dank says, keep doing you. Uh, that's a nice collection behind you. Yeah, it's it's not bad. It's it, it's it's uh, okay. It's okay. There's I don't know if we got any one-on-ones. I don't know if we got any one-on-ones. I mean, I guess the little golden driller, like I said, it's the beginning, kind of a one-on-one -one thing. This is actually a, a write-up when I was doing track promotion. A newspaper cut me out and uh, wrote a story. And then the local bank, for some reason, First State Bank down there in Texas, they cut the article out and then put the news story in here and uh, then, like, sent me the clippings of the newspaper in, in like, a little deal. And I always thought this was cool. Kind of like a one one I mean, we got we got some stuff. We got the Baloo 316. Who remembers that? Who remembers when the Chaz went head-to-head -head with Tony Stewart and sided with Robert Baloo? Who remembers the Robert Baloo 316? We need to pin this up, actually. We pin this up somewhere on the wall. Because this is worth being pinned. So this is from the year... That Robert Ballou was at Eldora, and Eldora um, was a rough night, and Rico got into a wreck, and it was a really bad wreck. And Robert Ballou said some shit about the track, and Tony Stewart tweeted back at him, and Robert Ballou said, all right, I'll work the damn track. And the next thing you know, Robert Ballou was, like, suspended from USAC. And it was all over these, these tweets. And so I came out with Ballou 316. I made a video. We'll see if I can find it here in a second. And on the back, I designed this helmet, and it said, Baloo 316 says, I just tweeted your ass. And this thing was awesome. This is a, a great, great shirt. We could actually put more of these shirts back on the uh, on the website. We should actually put this design back. I think I have it somewhere. Put it on a hoodie or something. That'd be pretty cool throwback. Ro Robert really loved it. Um, let's see if I can find that video. It is one of the most hilarious uh, videos Ever, but I might have put it to my personal profile, and since my personal profile got destroyed uh, and taken out, you know that that sucked. You know, twenty thousand just down the drain. Um, I don't know if the video is out there anywhere anymore, because, like I said, I think I put it on my personal profile. Yeah, I'm not seeing it anywhere. 
Not seeing it. Oh, well. That's fine. Baloo 316, for those who saw it, it will go down in history as a very uh, interesting thing. Let's see. I'll do one more search. It is a really, really nice video. It, it has, like, uh, Robert Baloo come down and, and do, like, a stunner. I, I, like, redid the faces with Tony Stewart and Eldora and, and Robert Baloo. And Robert Baloo was stone cold in the video. It was it was classic, but I can't find it. it it's gone forever. I, I, I probably have it somewhere stored in in a uh, uh, hard drive somewhere around here. Uh, let's see what the what the chats are saying here before we get out of here again. Yes, uh, no, it was 2019, I believe. Or, or well, it might have been 18. Hmm. Next thing you know, Tony is a drag racer. Yeah, that is pretty funny. Uh, I would buy one tonight, Chaz. Well, isn't that funny? How much would you charge for the Blue 316 shirt? Never seen that before. I could put it on the site. I mean, it's my design, my idea. Well, me and Larson talked about this, and, and Caitlin with the Larsonite. It's my idea. What, what it's about and all that, it's a whole other subject. But it's my idea. I created a word. I made it up. Even though it is a part of your, a spinoff of your name, it's still my word. It's still my, and once you become a certain level of popularity, like people are out there making Trump material, once you become, once your name becomes a part of that public domain, there's a lot of things that can happen. Uh, so anyways, um, I'm from Miami. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm from Miami. Where, where, where did that go? Oh, well, I, I lost it. Some of this, uh, I'm from Miami, stay, Miami, stay far away. You said FL. I, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. It's funny. It should be in the dictionary by 25. I, I get it. I get it. Bet I'll be watching the site. Okay. Well, for those who haven't went to the site yet, there is a link in the description to go straight to it to get these professional gas lighters. The professional gas lighter stuff is fresh. It is, it is on the deck. Uh, we do have some the Chaz hoodies as well, but these that all over print, man. I don't know how else to tell you that all over print is just so badass. And then, like I said, this this uh, Gator situation, I wore it wore it today and walked around in freaking seventeen degree weather. Uh, coffee cups right there, but yeah, we got to change the design a little bit on the coffee cup because I got it right here and I kind of don't like how it turned off. But regardless, I'll make some quick alterations to that, and it'll be fixed and be centered on for everyone who wants to buy them. But go over to the website. Uh, once you get to the website, it's the shop and then new arrivals. If you have an issue going through the website, link is in the description. It's the first link when you click on see more in the description below this video. Uh, but that's pretty much all we got for today. Thanks for the super chat, Bedgood. I think it was Bedgood, the only one who sent one. Let me let me check. Yes, Ellen Bedgood, the only one, sent a super chat for $2. That's fine. That's fine. Life goes on. The viewership it matters just as much as anything else. We also have the memberships in the, in the uh, on the video under below to get your name up there. We did add some names, so you might have saw your name added up if you are a part of the membership of the channel, or you support it through Venmo or Venmo or PayPal, which you know makes it to where Facebook or um, YouTube doesn't get a thirty percent cut from everything that you send support towards our channel and our work here. Whereas if you do Venmo, Venmo or PayPal, it's a direct feed; they don't take no cuts. So it's it's a little bit easier of a situation to uh, transport and make everything happen. So regardless, thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I got to say today. We may be back tomorrow. Call-ins. Should we do call-ins tomorrow or should we do call-ins today? Obviously, tomorrow's going to be the gravel show. It'll be very interesting. May have to do call-ins after the gravel show. Who knows what the gravel show is going to be putting out there and everyone's going to be seeing. Who knows? I mean, I have tuned in to every one of these gravel shows so far, and something new happens. We learn something every week. And so far, I have been called out and dragged through the dirt in every single gravel episode. Outside of the first one, I think. So, we'll see what happens. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, like the video, share the video, comment below with what you think. As always, be sure to subscribe. Go over to the website, get some uh, merchandise, and we will catch you next time.
shades, letting her go, letting her rip, letting her fly, tossing her in sideways, living the life, letting her ride, eyesight, winning to die, crossing her up on the cushion, crossing the line, cause some drama.